It's week three of the NFL, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Falcons and the Colts next on Madden Football. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here at Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. Gone alongside my good friend Charles Davis and CD for as much as the defender and you probably hates to hear it. The NFL is a league ruled by offenses and we've got a couple of good ones about ready to do battle here. Well, you know me quite well. Maybe one day I can get to be commissioner. I can flip that around a little bit. We can just talk about defense, but let's face it. We're talking about two units. They're ranking the top five in the league. So I think this might be a game where you forget about the field goal. You'd better finish your drives with touchdowns if you want to keep up with the Joneses on the other sideline. Fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. They'll be led out by the former Cal Bear, Aaron Rodgers. There have been very few quarterbacks in the NFL who have been as consistent throughout their career as Aaron Rodgers. He's been good for so long, and we've seen no decline in his skills. His accuracy and arm strength continue to elevate the talent around him, and his in-game mistakes, few and far between. On first and 10, here's Rodgers. He's got his pass catching tight end, that's Pitts. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Well, this defense for the Colts, very strong last week as they helped their squad improve to 2-0 on the young season. Yeah, what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. Give them a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. On play action, Rodgers. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's holding in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. Second and 12. Now Rodgers. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I think the game catches the ball in the backfield a week ago. They're going to try and involve him in that way in this game as well. But you can tell scouting is taking over. They're making it a little bit more difficult. And defensively, they told us, hey, we've got to take him out of the passing game, limit it to just short runs, because he can really impact this offense. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They'll run on first down. Edmonds works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. 
Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback it makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Oh, he's got his tight end pitch complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. On first down, Edmonds. He'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Now, after that last running play, we've got an offensive lineman down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And he is going to be stopped at the 12, short of the first down. So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. The kick by Bass is good. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And he's had good success here already this season throwing the football. Six touchdown passes in his two games. He's really got this offense playing with a lot of confidence, trying to establish themselves early as a Super Bowl contender. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Nice little nifty play for him there. He has the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got my cover. Oh, he just snuck out there. And they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. The numbers for him from a week ago, 12 carries, 70 yards, and a touchdown. And they love what they've got in him. He's the number four rusher in the league right now, so you know that you have to account for him on defense, which means you can play complimentary football as well. Throw the play action, get it out to the wide receivers, because they should have some open space, because the defense will key on him. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a close touchdown. Will Fuller, his second touchdown on the season. And the Colts have taken the lead. And that looked almost to be a case of, you know, a quarterback saying, hey, I'm going to throw this as far as I can and hope you run under it. Mission accomplished. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage, pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. Rosas good with the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And this taken in at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. 
Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. There's Rodgers to throw. Got this complete to the tight end pits. And way up past the 35 before he's taken go. down. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Throwing is Rodgers. Throwing right, and that's complete. Touchdown, Falcons! Russell Gage, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Falcons have retaken the lead. Now the try here for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. A drive there of just four plays. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here's Isaiah Rogers to return. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. On the handoff, Taylor. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the game gets tough in here. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left in no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. They'll look to throw. And he'll find Pittman. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. On the handoff, this is Taylor. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. 
The passing game has been working quite well so far, but the running game has been a little bit of a struggle. That's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Larry Ogunjobi in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Rosa's kick is good, and that will not us up at 10. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. to throw it's Rodgers a hit as he throws there incomplete something we haven't really seen much of from him an incomplete pass yeah last week he finishes 70 percent this week he's up over 80 percent I don't know how you slow him down pass rush is usually the best way because a quarterback on his back usually can't complete a pass it's a pickup of 13 but they're still a bit short and it'll be four down now the former Oklahoma Sooner, Tress Way, on to punt the football. Fifty-one yards on the punt there. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play. And he couldn't even get going moving the football. And he is going to have a Colts first down as this defense unable to hold. It's a seven-yard game there on third and two. All tied up at ten. Two minutes left in the first half. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. Finding some room at midfield. And finally brought down right at the midfield stripe. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. And that nearly trouble, but it's incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it. And it'll be second down. Second and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Back to throw again. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. They call it a loss of a yard there. And that'll bring up fourth down.
The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. They spot it on the midfield stripe. So it is a 60-yard attempt here. And did he have enough? He did. He kept it online and managed to tuck it into the bottom right corner. And they will take the lead at 13-10. to 10. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. set to begin their next drive the Falcons offense at the line and with Rodgers behind center you wonder if they'll take one shot at this and they're just going to run it here up the middle and an anxious moment or two there but they do get him down and with just four seconds left in this first half a timeout call and unless this is a quick incompletion this is likely the last play here of this first half a final shot before half for Rodgers. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kenny Moore. So we hit halftime here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll start up at TIAA Stadium in Jacksonville, and it's the Texans who are out in front. Two touchdown passes there for Deshaun Watson. From there, we head up to our nation's capital to check on the football team at home at FedEx Field. And for the moment, they find themselves trailing the visiting Carolina Panthers. Robbie Anderson, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get to the country music capital of the world. See what's happening with the Titans at home in Nashville. And you can see they trail in that matchup against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Two touchdown passes for Kirk Cousins there. Next, a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Falcons. And despite the fact that they're down on the scoreboard, they were able to have some success throwing the football in that opening half. Meanwhile, for the Colts, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. Final adjustments taking place in both teams' locker rooms. We're closing in on the second half. And to bring it your way, let's go back up to Indianapolis and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Rodgers on the return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here are the Colts to take over. They've won two straight, and they lead this one as well as they come up on first and 10. Carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. 
Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Bordeaux is past him, and he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. They'll set up to throw. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 40. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10, right at the 40. To the right side, this is Taylor. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Now back to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He wants it all for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that one in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down. And this one is going to just tuck into the bottom left corner as he gets it to go. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. Now I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. down. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. To throw again on second down. Rodgers. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. And now following the incomplete pass, we'll get a timeout here for an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. And he's got a man, Calvin Ridley. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. They'll run on first down. Edmonds. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Again, they run with Edmonds. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Rodgers now to throw. That's complete to Edmonds, his running back. And he is going to have a Falcons first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. 
and that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? On first down, Rodgers. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy out of the backfield once, hit him a couple times. Yeah, you're right, maybe they're on to something. And I think a lot of that is simply if you get it to him in space, more times than not, he's going to get more yardage than you expect out of each play. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a give to Edmonds. Uh, he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And meanwhile, Rodgers throw into the hands of Pitts here. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. And I'll tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Tyree Jackson. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Falcons are an extra point away from moving out in front. Extra point by Bass. Up and good. And that will put them on top here in the third. Set now to kick this one away. And off it goes. And here's Rodgers to return. And he returns this to the 22. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I've never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Play fake here on first down. That is caught. Michael Putman with it. He's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. And we've got a dandy here. A one-point game as we begin the fourth. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 43. They give to Taylor out of the gun. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Tough day, tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And now the throw going to Fuller, and he's got it. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 12-yard line. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, that was not what you would call straight-line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside. And he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great play there. His fourth touchdown of the year. Once again, going to retake the lead. The play of scoring here of late when our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew they were time getting short. They had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. They're going to try and run. 
And he is not going to make it. So they won't be able to move this lead up to a touchdown as it'll remain a five-point ball game. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it, you can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. On first down, Edmonds. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. And here we get a look at Stewart down on the ground still. Hope this isn't anything serious. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Vision and speed, two of the attributes that you might say are important for a free safety, and we saw both in evidence there. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Over the middle, that's caught by Ridley. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Here's a give to Edmonds running to the right. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. Here's Edmonds. And not much, maybe a yard down to the 23. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. On second and nine, Rodgers. This is to Pitts on the quick slant. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. Now a play fake. Rodgers. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. The linebacker Darius Leonard applied the heat. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Kyle Pitts, his second touchdown on the season. And the Falcons have taken the lead here in the fourth. Rodgers will throw for it. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. So the Colts now down on the scoreboard. At time, a huge factor. Their perfect start to the season in jeopardy unless they can score here as they've got it first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. 
Out quickly to Hines. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw. Taylor's got the first down and more. And finally taken down at the 15. Back-to-back -back gains of 17, and they are really on the march now. It's a first down. They run with Hines. He will push his way down to about the 14. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they take it away. to add the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it's capped off by the late touchdown that puts him out in front here in the final minute of the contest. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And now the attention on the Falcons offense. Trailing by four, 40 seconds to go. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Rodgers to throw. They'll go out to the flat for Edmonds. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll make it second down. Now Rodgers. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kenny Moore. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off and the Colts coming out now and three timeouts remaining here defensively but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over if they use the timeouts here it's strictly for show we got a play in the catch now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go second and seven here's Hines the Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. On third down, here's Taylor. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down.
It's a quarterback sneak. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And I tell you what, they were big favorites coming in, but they had to work for this one. It certainly wasn't the walk in the park that you expected coming into this one. I have a suspicion that in their meetings next week, head coach is going to talk to them a little bit about focus, don't you think? Yeah, because down the stretch, there was some nail-biting going on. And, and you're right, I think not only the fans, but those folks inside that locker room, they expected a comfortable victory. Yeah, they certainly did, and that just tells you about the NFL. Any given game, you never know how it's going to turn out. You better be ready to play. So for the Colts, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, for Atlanta,